Hello and welcome again to another program of Searching for Answers. This is a program designed to help you, the viewer, as well as all of us here on the panel, <coughs> to better understand the Bible. And right now we're in the book of Revelation, chapter 21. And if you'll go and get your Bibles and your different translations and read along with us as we discuss each verse, sometimes each word. <laughs> Sometimes each letter. Yeah. I'm Carolyn Thompson, and on my right is. I'm Gerald Winslow. I teach at Loma Linda University. And John Jones, La Sierra University. John Brunt, pastor at the Azure Hills Church. Ivan Blazin, Loma Linda University as well. Ivan, would you review the first six verses of chapter 21 in the book of Revelation, please? Well, I love what these verses say. They're just, we have, first of all, a new heaven, mm -hmm. a new earth, right. and a new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Everything is new. Yes. All right? And everything old has passed away, including the sea, the dangerous mm -hmm. sea that we spoke about last time as being symbolic of the powers of chaos and of evil. All right? And so in the context of a new heaven and a new earth, John is given a vision of the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, prepared like a bride, adorned for her husband. Mm -hmm. And surely, surely this fits the rest of the vision, of the, mm -hmm. the gold and the precious stones and the whole thing, you know. And, but now, what, what is of greatest interest, it would, it would seem, I heard a, a loud voice from the throne saying, what does this voice say? The dwelling place of God is with human beings. He will dwell with them as their God, and they will be his peoples, plural. Here are all the nations of earth as a part of God's new city. Yeah the new age, the new everything. And what is, and so God is going to dwell with them. And, uh, you know, to those martyrs have been wondering how long in the book of Revelation, it's almost like saying, where's God? Well, here he is. Here's God. They dwell with him as he dwells with them. And God will be with them and wipe away the tears from their eyes and the death that they've experienced and the mourning and the crying and the pain, that's all gone for all the first things have passed away. And so, as if a kind of redundance, a, a repetition, and the one who was seated on the throne, God the Father said, see, I'm making all things new. We already knew this, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it, it's emphasized. A lot happening in a few verses there. Right, I'm making everything mm -hmm. new. And furthermore, I want you to know that what I'm telling you is absolutely trustworthy. You can count on it, it is true. You're called to faith in what I'm saying here. So it is done. Think of Jesus on the cross. It is finished. It's mm -hmm. finished. He did that part. Now it is completely finished because we have new heavens and a new earth. And uh, what happens? Well, that's about where we were. That's as mm -hmm. far as yes. we went. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, the end. So uh, now we have some promises made in that mm -hmm. connection. I think I'm going to uh, reread the first few verses sure. in ca case some of our viewers mm -hmm. didn't catch up with us that quickly. So turn to Revelation 21, beginning with verse 1, and I'm reading from the Good News Bible. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth disappeared, and the sea vanished. And I saw the holy city the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared and ready like a bride dressed to meet her husband. I heard a loud voice speaking from the throne. This is in quotations now. Now God's home is with mankind. He will live with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and he will be their God. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more grief or crying or pain. The old things have disappeared. Then the one who sits on the throne said, and now I make all things new. He also said to me, write this, because these words are true and trusted. 
And he said, It is done. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. To anyone who is thirsty, I will give the right to drink from the spring of the water of life without paying for it. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of connections between the Gospel of John and the book of Revelation. And we can't read this last verse without thinking of the Gospel of John. John 4, where Jesus meets the Samaritan woman who comes mm -hmm. out to the well to get water. And mm -hmm. he tells her, if you knew who I was... Uh, the water ask, I can give you... Yeah, is living water that you'll never get thirsty never. again if you and drink this said, water. she said, what? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Who is this stranger? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Well, and uh, of course, that's what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about the gift of eternal life symbolized by this water, and this is what we see here. And it reminds us of what Jesus had said there, and we see that here is the ultimate fulfillment of it now, because as they drink this water, mm -hmm. they truly will never die again. There will be only life from here on. And, and John, the, the without cost, Mm -hmm. what, yeah. what do you? Yes, what do you, that's right. That sounds like a sermon, right there. Well, absolutely. I mean, isn't this just again Did they a reiteration? Have to pay of, in those days to get a drink of water from the local fountain? Well, often somebody would be there with a, a bucket and. Uh, right. It's uh, not the fountain, the, the well, which might be out of the, uh, ways, but, but the rather bucket. the street vendor. This yeah, this reaches oh. through John, as you say, mm -hmm. but oh, it reaches all the way back sense. to Isaiah chapter fifty-five where here the divine salesman takes up the cry of a street vendor, mm -hmm. hey, hey, everybody, you can hear his chant, you know, mm -hmm. everybody thirsty, anybody, come, come, water I have for you. But in this time you don't have to pay. You for don't it. have it's to free. pay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is a reiteration of the grace of God. And I, I, you know, the book of Revelation is a study in contrasts, all kinds of contrasts, so I, I want to draw a contrast here. In chapter 8 of this book, you remember when we're in the trumpets? And so one of the trumpets has to do with uh, the, the, the rivers and the springs of water and uh, a star falls down and it's called Wormwood. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm. And it's um, a third of the waters became Wormwood and many died from the water because it was made bitter. Here we have, in our experience here, the bitter waters that some drink and they die from these waters. But now comes the time when this is overcome. Mm -hmm. Don't have to drink bitter waters mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. He said there's no more crying or pain. You don't have to have mm -hmm. any of that stuff. you got the water of life now. And so this is the opposite. And so God really does make things right. Jerry? Mm -hmm. Yes. What do you make of the springs of water? <laughs> Well, I, I think I'm learning from these scholars that, uh, well, first of all, I think it's very handy to look at that Isaiah 55 passage mm. because it's mm -hmm. really clearly mm -hmm. drawn from that. Can we look at it and read sure, it? Yeah, sure, John, sure. John just uh, alluded to it. But, Isaiah uh, 55. As we ha so often have, I think we can see there in that passage um, the precursor uh, very clearly. And I liked your street the street sales. Well, it, it comes from living in Asia where I, I've seen people doing this. Mm -hmm. they, they have a thing of water on their back. It's just water and they have a little cup and they rattle it, uh, to beat mm -hmm. it to this mm -hmm. with a, something to, and take up the chant. You can still see it today in some mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the money thing is here too. Mm -hmm. Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. This is the first of, mm -hmm. verse of uh, Isaiah 55. Okay. And you who have no money, come. Buy and eat. <laughs> I don't know what you buy with. <laughs> Come buy wine and milk and uh, without money and without cost. So it's pretty evident that uh, what a paradox, it's just a, a wonderful paradox. Why spend wonderful. your wages and still be hungry? Yeah. Yeah. Listen to me and do what I say, and you will enjoy the best food of all. Yeah, and there's this sense that this is more satisfying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are things that don't satisfy, but so here we have, uh, I think, a promise that. Uh, that all the deep, life's deepest needs will be satisfied and the price has already been paid, if I have to sum it up. Mm -hmm. Why don't you read verse 6 of uh, Isaiah 55 oh. and just continue on for a little bit. Yeah, I, yeah, I closed it. Mm -hmm. That's all right. to go back. No, wait. Isaiah but, all right, 55, 55 verse, verse 6. 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a good conclusion, I think. And just keep going. Okay. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the evil man his thoughts. 
Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And our God, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. And See, then that's it goes to that beautiful isn't passage that beautiful? about my thoughts. And that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's really part of the message of the book of Revelation. Yes, when God is. Is. See, this is about repentance. When yes. you say turn or return, you're talking about mm -hmm. repentance. That's what the word means mm -hmm. in the Hebrew, yeah. is to turn around, come back. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Revelation, God calls for that. I, the fact that people stubbornly refuse it is one of our problems. How do we understand yeah. that anyone would refuse this? And he's pleading mm -hmm. with us. Yeah. Well, he's pleading with us particularly in Laodicea, where he presents himself as the divine salesman. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. says, I'm, I'm banging on your door, and I'm urging you to buy from me mm -hmm. the gold yeah. and the white raiment. Right, you know? and, right. Uh, but again, it's without price. It's gracious, isn't it? I'll, I'll, I'll say, uh, read verse 7, let the wicked leave their way of life and change their way of thinking. Mm. Let them turn to the Lord our God. He is merciful and quick to forgive. My thoughts, says the Lord, are not like yours, and my ways are different from yours. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways and thoughts above yours. Uh, if you take that contextually, right here, mm -hmm. uh, we could say, could we not, and you may have a different variation here, but that what makes God's ways higher is that His mercy mm -hmm. is inexhaustible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I mean, we, ours isn't, you know, <laughs> but His is. Mm -hmm. He is so patient. Uh, I think that a lot of us are impatient, and you wonder why God puts up with us. But he is so patient, and he's willing to do anything he can to get you into the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. It's an amazing thought. It, seem, it's, it seems easy to imagine why the revelator would turn back to this picture of restoration. Uh, there's some beautiful poetry here. Yes, mm -hmm. there is. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, right at the end of Isaiah 55, I hadn't planned to uh, read that, but instead of the thorn bush will grow the yeah. pine tree, instead of the briars, the myrtle will grow. And this will be for the Lord's renown for an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. So that sense of permanence in the, uh, which seems to be needed here in Revelation mm. is also there. So just lots of resonance in uh, mm. these passages. Well, and I think, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, Isaiah may be John the Re uh, Revelator's most frequent mm. yes. reference yes. point oh, in the right? Old Testament. Yeah, yeah. 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 probably oh. Ezekiel next, but Isaiah probably tops the mm -hmm. list. Yeah, mm. that's a call for us to read and study the book of Isaiah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, my. All right. Now, where are we? Verse eight. Well, we're verse, uh, okay. Who wants to read that? Well, did we did we talk about those who conquer? Verse seven? Well, I don't think we've read seven yet. Oh, we've read oh, through sorry. six. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're Just right. Through no, six. Verse seven. Okay. Uh, oh, Go you ahead, want me to do it? Uh -huh. <clears throat> Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God. And here, here comes that theme again. Mm -hmm. And they will be my children. Oh, now, it's kind of sweet, isn't it? Well, it is. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. uh, you know, a parent with a child. Yes. You know, and and it says those who conquer, and I. I love this, and at the same time, I'm worried about people getting a wrong understanding of conquering. As you know, I have done everything. I have tried so hard. I've struggled so long, and so on. I that don't. sounds like Paul. That's what he said. I kept the law perfectly. Oh, and his nobody evil. kept it better than I did. Did you hear that? Oh, you haven't heard it. What he says on Sabbath. Um, this is Randy talking about in Galatians about how Paul said, and if. If works could get you to heaven, I kept the law perfectly, he says. Yeah. Well, don't we conquer by the blood of the Lamb? Isn't that the mm -hmm. message of the book of Revelation? Yes. Uh, yeah. This is about grace again. It is. Mm -hmm. Conquering, we think it's our task to conquer. Uh, you even have Revelation 19 where the armies of heaven follow Christ. But they're never said to conquer. He's the one that conquers. Mm -hmm. So if we're connected with him, we conquer. Okay, a note of grace, I believe. Okay. okay. Would you like to continue on, Ivan? Okay, but as for, now here comes a seemingly negative note, but I don't think it's really negative. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the polluted, the murderers, the fornicators, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, 
their place will be in the lake of fire that burns with sulfur, which is the second death. Mm -hmm. So you could say, why destroy the heavenly vision here? <laughs> and I, if I've counted up right, this same kind of theme is going to occur again. Like in this chapter, at the end of the chapter, notice this. It's, it's been describing how wonderful this place is. Verse 27, but nothing unclean. Mm will enter, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood. Here comes this business about lying and falsehood again. And one more time, one more time in chapter 22, it says, uh, verse 14, wonderfully, blessed are those who wash their robes so they may have a right to the tree of life, but outside are the dogs and the sorcerers, the fornicators, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood, which happens to be a theme that keeps mm -hmm. running through each of mm -hmm. these. And you say, why does John want to say this in the midst of this beautiful, beautiful picture? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What's, What's your hunch? Well, my hunch is that it's a part of the pastoral exhortation. Right now is the time for choosing there's the great controversy right now. There's the two cities, you know, Babylon and the New Jerusalem. Um, remember, folk, those I'm writing the book of Revelation to, outside the city are these. I, I figure John is writing with a heavy heart. You must not go that pathway. Go the other pathway. Just accept. Take the water. You won't be outside. Mm -hmm. I, that's the way I'm feeling it. Okay. Would it be safe to say that nobody will be lost who wants to be saved? I'm going to say amen to that. Mm -hmm. And I, it seems too that um, we've said this so many times about Revelation, but these are people who need reassurance that in the end there'll be triumph. And I suppose that yeah. they need to be reassured even now that we've arrived at the, at the, uh, the joyous state that they're mm -hmm. in, there's, there is this repetition that it won't be corrupted. It won't be corrupted. It won't be corrupted. Yeah, you, you can count on it. Yes. It's, it's, it does come through several times. Those people who've injured in the past, their, their, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. And maybe it says too, um, Carolyn, that God's grace that he gives us freely mm -hmm. is a grace that it really is meant to make a change in the way we live. You know, it doesn't leave us where it found us. We become a new kind of people. It doesn't mean we never make any mistakes or anything, but we're not, you know, the murderers, the idolaters, these big things that are so opposite to God. Grace changes us, mm -hmm. you know? And early, you know, in verse 4, the old order of things has passed away. Yeah, that's I think right. he just has to remind them that was the old order. Remember, mm -hmm. it's gone. It's over. It's over. He must be worried, you see, well, that people could give in well, to the power of the beast mm -hmm. at the time when he writes. That's right. You know, the conquering is not, we've said this already, we need to say it again, mm -hmm. is not some kind of agonistic struggle, some striving of our own that we do. Uh, no. Again, Jesus is talking to the church at Laodicea in the last part of chapter 3. He who overcomes, this in some translations, overcomes or conquers, it's the same word. Mm -hmm. Ha and he who gains the, the victory. But, but again, verse 21 of chapter 3, he who conquers. Let's, get, let's go there. Well, sure. just, this is a quick reference in passing. Yeah. Uh, he who conquers, I will grant to sit on my throne. But the analogy flows out from what Jesus says he has done. Right. The point is, I have conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. And it's only in parallel with Jesus' victory that we can claim any victory in our lives. It's not something of our own doing in a vacuum, so to speak. Well, John, maybe this is uh, John's equivalent to what the phrase Paul uses over and over again, in Christ and yeah, in the Lord. That's right. Mm -hmm. We're connected with him. Yeah. Things change. Yeah. We gain the victory that that's way. Right. Yeah. Romans this, 8. No, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, this must be Christ speaking to him who overcomes. Sure. I will give you the right to sit with me on my throne, yeah. just as I overcame on his throne. <coughs> because <coughs> Jesus, our elder brother, was down here and he overcame all the temptations that he had. And that's enough. Yeah. And that's enough. Paul talks about this back in Romans 8. In fact, he, yeah. he talks right. about not only being a conqueror, but being kind of a super conqueror. He, he adds uh, Greek, Romans, uh, Romans 8, okay. uh, verse 37. Romans 8, verse 
37. Mm -hmm. Well, we really need to go up and see the question that he's answering okay, here. Okay, let's go he up. He asks, verse 33, who will bring any charge against God's elect? Yeah. It's God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? So he talks about all these things. And then in verse 37, he says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors, this said. It's, it's really all one word. Uh, yeah. The word from which we get hyper yeah. is at the beginning of it. So we're over conquerors. Yeah, we're <laughs> over conquerors. We're hyper conquerors. We're super sin abounded, conquerors. grace super abounding. He's yes. the super apostle. It's That's always, right. <laughs> and, and, and John, the verse you just closed with, 37. Mm -hmm. Conquers more than conquers through, through him, him who loved us. Who loved us. There's so it's secret. not what we've done. It That's is it. him who loved us who made us conquerors, super conquerors. It's amazing, isn't it? It, it really mm -hmm. is appealing. Well, this is why Ellen White, in, in one of her visionary experiences, says, at the end, we will cast our crowns before him. At his feet. At his feet, because mm -hmm. he's the one who made this possible. We're so overcome. Yeah with His grace mm -hmm. and the fact that He has allowed us sinners into heaven in a perfect place. And He says sin will never rise again. Now, how, how can that happen? Because there's nobody there to tempt us? We're impervious to it, even if there were. Mm -hmm. Sin can't get its hooks into us mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to say, for those of us who believe that God respects the freedom of those creatures, human beings that he's made, that who have freedom, that it doesn't mean a change in God's eternal principles of the kingdom because freedom will still exist. Mm -hmm. And to the extent that there's freedom, there could, could, as a hypothetical, still be someone who uses it poorly. So it's really a promise then that people will use their freedom well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Having it's, learned. It's not, a, it's not a promise that freedom will be taken away. Mm -hmm. no. It's a promise that people having learned will use their freedom well. It's an important distinction. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. Oh, yes. Very important. Okay, where are we now? We went back and now we're still in uh, the book uh, of Revelation. Yeah, where are we? I was afraid, we're I'm afraid to say now because... Nine. I think we're in verse 9. We're Last verse. time I gave the wrong verse, it's verse 9. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 9. Um, who would like to read that? I'll read it. Okay. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And in the spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It has the glory of God and a radiance like a very rare jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. It has a great high wall with 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels, and on the gates are inscribed the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city has 12 foundations, and on them are the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. That's the New Revised Standard. Mm -hmm. So this is a second vision now. It is. It's mm -hmm. kind of putting the microscope on the New Jerusalem and tuning in this on the details of put the, the city. Yeah, put the glasses on, right? adjust mm -hmm. them, and uh -huh. let's see what we have here. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, one thing that strikes me just uh, hearing you read it, uh, John, is that we've said so much about how uh, John the Revelator draws from the Old Testament, but here it comes together. The tribes and the apostles are all mm -hmm. linked into the into the very architecture of the the city. Uh, well, it's it's a nice image in a way, isn't it? Because this book links all of that together, and I think it's one important reason why Christians, at their best, never gave up on what some what we call the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Well, we uh, we can. Uh, that's right, and we can read a passage in Paul that corresponds to this. We all know what passage that will mm -hmm. be in Ephesians, the second chapter, mm -hmm. because he pictures this in a way, too, with these apostles, you know. Um, 
Shall we turn there? Yeah, read. Ephesians, the second chapter. He's talking about mm -hmm. there's one new humanity created by the cross of Christ. You know, no more Jew or Gentile and all Ephesians that. Ephesians 2. So the second chapter. Okay. And then um, verse uh, 19. Let's read Ephesians it. Ephesians 2, verse 19. <coughs> yeah. We have about a minute and a half. Okay. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Read that again, that last part. Well, it says you, you see, it's kind of like Jews and Gentiles, and yeah. the Gentiles are now incorporated into the saints, the people of God. Yes. And all of them together grow into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also, you Gentiles, are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Just before he said they were strangers to the covenant and alienated from God, now they are the dwelling place of for God. God. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Incredible verse. Ephesians 2, yeah. verse... Well, starting with... Uh, closing verses. Uh, closing verses, verse okay. 18 on... Okay. So that, that's, now this is a hint too that when you talk about the temple, mm -hmm. the temple ultimately I think refers to the people of God mm -hmm. with God dwelling in their midst. That's right. Not so much a structure as a people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we have 30 seconds and I just hope that our viewers are enjoying the 21st chapter of the book of Revelation. Of course, we didn't finish it because we have so many questions and so many things we want to stress. So I hope that uh, people will continue on. And until next time, this is Carolyn Thompson for Searching for Answers.